let's face it, can you really ever have enough serving trays? Okay, maybe you can, but this one's really cool and you'll have a great time making it. It's great for parties inside and out. The legs are made from pressure treated southern pine so you can set them up anywhere outdoors and not worry about rot or decay. The tray itself is constructed from three quarter inch southern pine with a bottom that can be customized to suit your taste. I actually used some leftover wood flooring for the bottom on this tray. Now for the one we're making today, I bought some half inch wood planks. I'm staying pretty close to the measurements on these plans, so I've gone ahead and cut the blanks for all four sides. To give myself some wiggle room on the miter joints, I cut the side blanks two inches wide by 24 inches long, and the end blanks three and a half inches wide by 21 inches long. The plans include a pattern for cutting the ends, including the handle, so you can either trace that onto your blank and cut it out or create your own custom curve. Use a jigsaw or bandsaw to cut out the rough shape of the end. The easiest way to cut out the handle is with a one inch Forstner bit at either end of the hole and then cut out the connecting lines. Next, we'll cut the slot along the bottom inside edge of all four sides of the bottom. It needs to be just a bit wider than the bottom material is thick to allow for expansion and contraction. You can use a slot cutting bit on the router table or just make several passes on the table saw. Now that I have all four sides roughed out for the tray, I'm gonna use my trim router with a roundover bit to soften up the inside edges of all four sides. You can use the roundover bit on both sides of the handle opening at this point. Then cut the sides and ends to length according to the plans. They need to match precisely for tight miter joints. I'll be removing some material from the sides in this case. We're almost ready to glue everything together, almost everything. I have one end clamped to the bench here. I have the uh, two sides and I have the other end. We're only going to be gluing these two corners, these back corners, and you'll see why in just a second. I wanna show you this. First of all, these are Collins miter clamps and they're gonna uh, help us out because uh, we're not using nails in the corners. We're actually going to use some splines here in just a second, but these will clamp the uh, corners in place and then we'll be ready to put our bottom in. Even though we're not gluing the other end at this point, we'll be clamping it in place just to keep the frame square. I made the bottom for this tray out of half inch pine planks from the hardware store. Use the biscuit joiner to connect them, then sand the entire setup. Trim it to size on the table saw. and slide it into the frame. Then glue the end into place. Once the glue is dried, use the roundover bit on the outside edges. This way the transitions from side to side will be close to perfect. To create the splines called for in the plans, I use some old ash paneling that I removed from a remodeling project. I cut short eighth inch thick pieces on the table saw. The sled used to cut the slots is just three quarter inch plywood cut and nailed to form a 90 degree angle. The blade is set so that it will cut about three eighths of an inch into the corners of the tray. Once the slots are cut, glue the splines into place. After the glue is dried, sand them smooth with the outside edge of the tray. Here is the stand for the tray, and here's how it works. Basically, the plans call for three quarter inch pressure treated pine. I used a five quarter inch deck board that's also pressure treated, sanded it down nice and smooth, and then ripped it into these strips that are an inch and three eighths wide. Now, if you decide to go that route, pay close attention to your measurements. Here's how the stand works. 
This outer set of legs fits just inside the uh, tray bottom. The inner set of legs fits just inside this outer set of legs. Other than that, they are identical, and here's how we make them. The plans have a scale pattern for the top and bottom ends of the legs. Cutting them two at a time will ensure that they're precise. Once all four legs are cut, it's important that the pivot hole be in the exact location on all of them. Measure and mark the location, then use a drill press to make the pilot hole. To cut the tenons on the ends of our cross pieces, I've set the table saw blade just about an eighth of an inch tall, and this little spacer right here will make sure I'm the exact same distance from the uh, end of the, each cross piece that I need to be for each cut. For the mortises, use a 3 8 inch drill bit and drill holes 3 8 of an inch deep. Forstner bits are great for this step since they leave a nice flat bottom. Now what we have is a classic story of the square peg and the round hole, which is where the sharp chisel comes in. We'll uh, square off the shoulders of the mortise here and we'll be all set to put together our stand. Once the mortises are squared and the tenons fit snugly, glue them into place and use clamps to hold them securely until they've dried. Now once the narrow side and the wide side are done, all the glue is dry, it's time to hinge them together. Now the plans call for that nice decorative bolt uh, that passes through. What I've done is just used a T-nut and a decorative bolt here along with a washer. Now the washer I'm going to set between the two sides and then go ahead and slide that decorative bolt through and you can do this pretty much any way you want to if you just want to use a bolt and a nut that's fine this is completely up to you I would recommend though that whatever method you decide on that you go ahead and paint or stain this before you put it together this makes it a little bit easier well what do you think not bad for a couple days in the workshop, huh? Best thing I think is the fact that because these are pressure treated southern pine here on the bottom, uh, you can set this uh, anywhere out on the patio or deck, not worry about dampness on the ground. And this is a really nice looking tray. Just needs a coat of paint, maybe a coat of varnish. All I need are a few friends so I can have a party and uh, serve them up. Thanks for watching and remember realoutdoorliving.com for more great woodworking projects. Wood, it's real.